In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is Tuesday, August 4th. We'll look at parts of Psalm 44, entitled Redemption, Remembered and Present Dishonor, to the Chief Musician, a Contemplation of the Sons of Korah. So it starts off with parts of the verses that lead us to look at the redemption that is remembered, as the title of the psalm says, we have heard with our ears, O God. So we have heard, we have seen, we were taught from generation to generation what our fathers have told us, the, the, to, the story of redemption that was taught us, the deeds you did in their days and days of old. You drove out the nations with your hand, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples and cast them out. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance because you favored them. So it's a, it's a remembrance of what the Lord did for the people of Israel. How they were a chosen people, a chosen generation to be led out and taken out of slavery, out of bondage, led out to the journeys onto the promised land and led from victory to victory. And the times where they were defeated were the times where they were far from God. And the Lord in His forbearance and mercy uh, to lead to repentance may allow difficulties along the way for all peoples to come back to the knowledge of the truth and the true way of holiness. Later on in the psalm, in verse 8, it says, In God we boast all day long and praise your name forever. So this is the proper understanding of orthodoxy or straightforward praise or glorification. Glorifying God that our boast, that our glory should be in God. And not only times and here or there, but all day long. That's why St. Paul says to the Galatians in chapter 6, But God forbid that I should boast or that I should glory except in the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me, and I to the Lord, and I to the world. So we think of this and we say, in God we boast all day long and praise your name forever, that our boasting should be in God forever. Later on in the psalm, it says, yet for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. St. Paul quotes this passage also in his letter to the Romans in chapter 8, where he explains how we, uh, that all things work together for good to those who love God, that we have been predestined to adoption as sons and daughters of God in glory, that the, the, the Lord has prepared us for eternity, that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, that we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. That's the famous chapter 8 of St. Paul's letter to the Romans. And he quotes this passage. He says, Yet for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That we expect as Christians that there are difficulties. The apostles taught us well and said so in Acts chapter 4. We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. So we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We're reminded that our Lord came as St. John the Baptist witnessed and called him the Lamb of God who bears the sins of the world. We are called also to be as lambs as sheep in the midst of wolves, that we ought to have the wisdom to be wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves in this difficult journey in this world, while at the same time bearing our cross, denying ourselves and following our Lord onto victory. At the end, the Psalm concludes with a beautiful verse 8, 20, 26, where it says, Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. So we are the reminder that God is arisen from the dead for our help and it rises for our redemption. And He redeems us for His mercy's sake. And it, it's not that we deserved it, but it's out of His love for mankind that He accomplished salvation for each and every one of us by name. And we are reminded that it is through His mercies that we are not consumed, that His faithfulness endures forever, that his mercy, His faithfulness, His goodness are renewed daily. That He daily loads us with benefits. That we thank Him and praise Him all day long for leading us throughout this journey, this sojourn on earth, onto the path of victory, onto the path of holiness, through Him who loved us and gave Himself for us. We ask the Lord to grant us to have that same resolve, that we do not be discouraged or lose heart, that we continue down our path and we not forget the good things He has done for us from generation to generation. That we may be reminded that this is part of the journey as Christians. That there is tribulation, but that He already overcame the world. That He redeemed the world and He did so for His mercy's sake and for His love for mankind. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.